Hey everyone, welcome to Waxing Pixels, a podcast about waxing some pixels, which is actually about video games. That's the joke. On Battle Geek Plus, my name is Josh, and with me as almost always, we got Heather. Hi. Ryan. Hey. And Frank. Yo. Dog. Word up. We don't got a dog. Cat. Dragon Ball Z all day. Dragon Ball Z all day, dog. Anyhow, this is a podcast where we talk about video games, and we do it every week. And uh, welcome back to it, this one, them, the podcast. Thanks for listening. Joe, I know you're listening right now. And we got some pretty cool content coming up today. But first, let's do our normal thing called What You Playing? Hey, Heather, what you playing? I'm playing how fucking hot it is in this damn apartment. But what were you playing earlier? I earlier I was playing Zelda. Right. Yes. And 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 what happened in Zelda? I beat Zelda. Yay. I saw it too. Yay. That I mean everybody talked about how disappointing the boss battles were at the end and they were correct. They were disappointing. So, especially the second fight where you're on the fucking horse. That was stupid. I hate that. I no, hated. I, hate I hated that. every so much. second of it. The horse was stupid. The directionals were stupid. It's like, oh, hey, you need to shoot him in the underbelly. Get under him to shoot him. Okay. And then I was stuck, and it was like, oh my god, Link, get on top of Ganon and hit his weak spot. And I'm like, I'm, I literally can't go anywhere. So that drove me insane. Also, it totally pissed me off that the horse that it automatically gave me was the first horse I ever grabbed which was the weakest horse that I had, and I just never got rid of the damn thing. So I was really bummed that I didn't get to use my favorite horse. That was stupid as hell, so, you know, whatever. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. Sorry. Give it a lick. Mm, he tastes just like raisins. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I beat that. So now I guess um, I'll, I'm going to check and see what my percentage is, and I guess go from there. Check 98. Out. Bro, fucking hell. Probably. <laughs> Which, P.S., I got 98% for Shantae when Me I beat too. it. Me too. I think I got 97 of items or whatever. Well, there's, from what I understand, there's typically like a secret something or other, like dance or item or whatnot in the Shantae series. So, um, yeah, that would that would be why, I'm guessing. But I haven't really looked into it. So... Yeah, so now I'm just playing Until Dawn, which I haven't played in a week. I Today was the first time I played a game since Tuesday, last Tuesday, because I'm busy, yo. Ryan, what you playing? All right, so over the weekend, I downloaded Mega Maker. And like Josh and I were watching um, some Mega Maker levels on Twitch earlier today. And like we were just watching this guy trying to get to this really hard level where this guy had to use the top spin and the charge kick just to get through the stage. And we were like, oh my God, get through it, get through it. Yeah, we were, we were really rooting the dude on. Yeah, like, uh, let's see, I played it for a little while on Sunday. Like I... Made my tutorial level, but I ended up making this level where, you know, they made me place all the basic, you know, assets. And then I made a boss room with Cutman in it, but then I accidentally put a large pit in there. So every time I would get inside the boss chamber, I would fall in and Cutman would fall in after me, but it wouldn't really count uh, as a victory. That's hilarious. And then I, I played some user-made levels, you know, and, um, since the game had only been out for a day at the time, you know, everyone's levels were just like, like two rooms each. And like I played a, a heat man level where you just run to the other side of the screen and you just fight like crash man at the end and that's it. Um, like a lot of the early levels I played weren't that good, but then we, but but the, but then today we started watching some like really crazy ass levels on Mega Maker. And once you guys started watching that, I was all like, "Oh, Mega Man, that's cool." And then I started realizing how unorthodox the level was, and then I was like, "Oh wait, that thing came out." Yeah. So I totally forgot about it. And also, um, I purchased the Zelda DLC over the weekend, and um, I did that Trial of the Sword where you had to go through 45 levels of the Deku Tree, and I got up to level 8. Like, you start off with absolutely nothing, so you kind of have to, like, you have to grab weapons from the, the Coblins, and then after that you kind of work your way up to get you know better weapons as you go along. And 
I think the first boss I just beat was like a stone talus, but I had to beat it with, with like a stick. Oh, fucking stone <laughs> talus. I hate those damn things. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to fight a Lionel at some point. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about taking some time to try and fight like a silver Lionel oh, with shit. like a spoon. Oh, <laughs> A spoon and a pot lid? Yeah. I'm thinking about it. It's been done. I know it's been done. That, hence why I'm thinking about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, then um, other than that, I went to this like deserted town. Well, like the ruins of this deserted place. And then it was like, you know, hey, this is where you can find Majora's Mask and, uh, you know, Tingle's suit. And I, well, I haven't found them yet because I decided just to go to the Trial of the Sword first. That's pretty cool. Like at first when we came back to what you were talking about, you're like, and I went to this deserted town. And I'm just like, why did you go to a desert? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, wait, you mean in Zelda? Yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of all I did. Are you like trying to like find like arcade machines that still work at a deserted arcade or yes. something? <laughs> trying to look for abandoned arcades so I can take it home. <laughs> so you can take the whole thing home. Yeah. I can fit it in my little car. <laughs> right. Frank, what you playing? It's uh, Legends of Dragoon and I just finished uh, Shantae. Yay! Rad. How far are you in Legend of Dragoon? Um, just before the third disc. Okay. And that was, that was what, like a three disc game? Four. Four disc game. Yeah. Oh, back Close in the day mind. when games came in multiple discs. Crazy. I miss the days. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you actually have to like? Now, is is each disc like its own ROM or something? Yes. Or, okay, so you it actually tells you to like switch discs and. You are correct, yes. Oh, that's That pretty explains cute. what you were doing earlier whenever you were fucking around with a bunch of discs and you said something about, like, oh, switch discs. And I thought you were looking at something in regards to, like, a like a tutorial program for something. I did, it didn't even cross my mind that it involved a game you'd been playing because multiple disc games are just, that's not a thing anymore and it hasn't been for a long time. No, no, nowadays, nowadays, it's just, you know, the first level of every game is, you know, downloading a patch. <laughs> yep. Honey. What? What you playing? Me? I'm playing Speedrunners. We played that all once. Oh, well. Yeah. On that one show we did. On the YouTubes. It's on the PS4 now. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, I heard uh, cocaine runners get a lot more money. Cocaine runners? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, uh, Speedrunners came to PS4, and uh, we got it uh, courtesy of Tiny Build Games. It's uh, ours now. And the, the whole property, everything, all the money from it, too. Uh, oh, so we're fuck. never going to do this podcast ever again. This will be we're, rich. We're done. Yep, we're done. No, but uh, they, they did... We're moving uh, to Morocco. Let's go. They, they uh, sent me a code for a copy of the game. And I downloaded it, and I've been unlocking stuff, and hopefully, you know, start streaming it and playing online sometime soon, because I, I just wanted to have some stuff unlocked before I did that, though. So I've played through, like, all the story modes that come with it on easy and medium difficulty, and then I've just played, like, random versus bots and stuff to build up, you know, my level for unlockables and whatnot. Uh, but that's mostly what I'm doing, and that's mostly because Dragon Ball Fighters hasn't come out yet. So, which we'll get more into Dragon Ball Fighters later. But yeah, that's pretty much, I was telling you, Heather, the other day that, uh, like, Fighters is, like, the only game I'm actually legit excited for now. Yeah, I know. Like, everything else, like, like Sonic Mania is coming out in, like, less than a month, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Sonic Mania. Sorry, I thought you meant Frontier. Continue. <laughs> Sonic Frank's just so Sonic ready to Frontier. hate everything. <laughs> no. It's his natural state of being. <laughs> See, I thought, Lori, and, and you thought I was bad. Lori, Lori, Frank is the evil one. See, not that she listens to this podcast. No, but, but now it's like your efforts have been wasted. It's on record now. Everyone knows <laughs> it's re- okay. Then it's officially recorded that you have wasted. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank, you shouldn't be down on me like that. You're the ultimate waste of time. Oh, ouch! That, that was that painful. You? It's like burn. Only a partial waste of time? Still. I'm married to a partial waste of time versus an ultimate waste of time. I'd say I scored one, you know. I don't know. Frank wins at being a waste of time. I, perspective. It's a thing. A winner is you. Uh, <laughs> I have no comeback for this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever called you the ultimate waste of time. No. Never. I'm the first. You're first. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've also been called the ultimate waste of time, too. Oh, have Let's you? Let's not yeah. get your mom involved. Oh, <laughs> man. Ouch. Uh, so, now that half the room is the ultimate waste of time. <laughs> Actually, the majority of the room is a waste of time, since you're partial. Well, yeah, yeah, but half the room is the ultimate waste of time. I'm going to have to side on Frank with Frank on this one, because, you know, math and all that. But I'm just a partial waste of time. Yeah, which is still a waste of time. But I'm not the ultimate waste of no, time. No, but... Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. You haven't met everyone in the world. How do you know I'm the ultimate? Because, Frank, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was that was a really nice try. Honey. Nice try. Nice try. It was a partial waste of time. All right, it's fucking hot in here. Let's roll. Yeah, I was getting there, but... <laughs> Anyway, there's a new Atari console on the way. Someone take about this. Talk, take, talk, talk. Someone talk <laughs> about this. Go fast, Ryan. Yeah, so it looks like Atari is going to reveal a new console after 20 years after the hit console, the Atari Jaguar. <laughs> I didn't even know that they were still in video game business. Well, they're a developer now. You know, like they actually, you know, helped like publish a lot of the Dragon Ball Z games on the PS2. I did not know that. Yeah, but now they're getting kind of back to the console business and. This thing's called the Atari Box. Uh, we don't know what it plays yet, but it looks like it does have an HDMI port. It has some USBs. And so Atari said in a newsletter that it's their objective to create a new product that stays true to their heritage while appealing to both old and new fans of the Atari. So we don't really know what this thing plays. It doesn't look like it accepts cartridges or anything, but there is an SD slot. So I would assume it's more of a virtual console thing. And I know Atari has released, you know, Atari flashbacks in the past. I don't know how good they are because I never tried one, but I assume this is like some, you know, big Atari box. You can like connect it to Atari's virtual console service and download Atari games from there. And I said this on Twitter, I do hope there is an Atari Jaguar virtual console service because, you know, I always wanted to play Alien vs. Predator on the system. All I know is that I'm highly confused as to what year it is. Yeah, see, we had the NES Mini last year, the Super Nintendo Mini coming this year, and Atari Box. I think we're in the we're in some kind of combination of the '70s and the '90s. I really want an N64 Mini, and I want the controllers to be tiny. Also, that would be adorable. But still awkwardly sure. shaped. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out. That would be great. I'm trying to reach down, and hit or, the Z button, or you can get a smaller version of that doorstop known as the Dreamcast. I thought it was called the Dreamcast Mini. Doorstop Mini. Doorstop Mini. <laughs> the, uh, now, this thing is built with modern specs, though, it says on uh, GameSpot. So I got to wonder if there's like the possibility of adding new content to this. Yeah, like I think if, that was, like, like if Atari was sitting around and being all like, hey, remember the Ouya and how that failed? Let's do that. <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of like what came to mind here aside from maybe like a virtual console sort of thing or like a 30 built-in games blinky atari light on the front nice 70s style wood finish you know well you know i, I hate to say this but i don't have the sentimentality towards the atari like people before our generation but so i kind of would have preferred it a, a jaguar mini i uh you need to shut your face ryan <laughs> the the only real like Atari memories I have was like going over to a neighbor's house and they put in E.T. and then I never wanted to play the Atari again. <laughs> <laughs> like I walked like I was like on a screen and I fell into a hole and I was stuck in the hole and that was the game. I was all like wow video games suck <laughs> or at least Atari does. I want a Nintendo. My dad had an Atari and he also had a ColecoVision and I would play those. I found a ColecoVision in my grandparents' attic once. It, it didn't work, though. Oh. Yeah. That's sad. But, anywho, moving on. I did say we we're going to be talking more about Dragon Ball Fighters today. And we are. Which makes me not a liar. <laughs> or, 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 you, you know, need to stop taking words out of my mouth. Or, or, or an ultimate waste of time. But, with me to talk about Dragon Ball Fighters today, I have two ultimate wastes of time. Ryan and Frank. Heather's also here. I am. So, Dragon Ball Fighters has added some characters. We've known for a while that Trunks was coming to Fighters, and a trailer for him dropped at Evo. But also, two more characters have been announced. 
And they are Krillin and Piccolo. Gaffs! Why would they even have these characters in this game? I don't understand it. They need better assists. You know what? Um, I understand that the reason why they revealed them or announced them or whatever is because, hey, check this out. Everybody's going to freak out because these are some really cool characters and everybody loves them and their main characters. Yay! And by the way, here are their stats. What they really were doing was announcing their stats. So I just like, I understand that, but a part of me was also like, you know, what do you mean they're going to have main characters in this fighting game about this series? What? That's like having a mobile suit Gundam game without the fucking mobile suits. Well, it's kind of... I mean, most Dragon Ball games that come out nowadays have, like, 135 characters and, like, Yeesh. three of their transformations, some what-if transformations, Ugh. plus you can yeah. create your own characters. So, you know... Too much. When you, when you have something that's like this, where it's more like... The last time something like this was done was Super DBZ. Like, they had, like... 16, 18 characters. Yeah. So. Oh, but remember back in like the 16 bit era, like, you know, like he would barely see Krillin in a fighting game. That's true. Yeah. Like, you would see him more in like the RPGs and stuff than he would the, the fighting games. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Krillin, he is not especially strong, and everyone knows this, but, and his reach is not especially great. But he does have a wide variety of techniques and an unblockable Kianzan attack. Yay! Kianzan being Destructo Disc for all you dub fans out there. And then, Frank, you were getting kind of excited about Piccolo. You normally play as Piccolo or some Namekian or whatever mm -hmm. in Dragon Ball games. Like, what, what got you interested in Piccolo? Piccolo is my favorite character. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's as simple he's as that. serious. It's, it's just all the time. He's going to be Frank with you. <laughs> <laughs> the uh i don't think anybody gets that reference that's fine but uh no well, I, I didn't know like is it like the long reach is it you know like his power is fucking piccolo that's just all it. you need to know so so pretty much arc system works is making this game specifically for you <laughs> like there, there was there where was it's a, also making it specifically for you too yeah yeah where it's also specifically making it for me <laughs> no arc system works like the the uh Producer, uh, Tomoka Hiroki, of this game, she was talking about how this game is built with not, like, super hardcore fighting fans in mind, but more super hardcore Dragon Ball fans in mind to kind of get super hardcore Dragon Ball fans into, like, serious uh. fighting games. So, so it's, like, more obvious as to why you lost and stuff like that. Like, you're not seeing, like, these, like just little micro footsie techniques and stuff that people right. who aren't already like hardcore into it. Like you're going to know what got you when you were got, and you're going to know what you're doing, what it happens and the inputs are going to be easier and stuff. And if you just want to play as your favorite character, then rad. You, you know. know what? That's not, that's really great because I do like fighting games and there are times where I do want to sit and I want to watch some really crazy ass match between, you know, two pros and whatever. But the other side of it is that 98% of the time, I'm fucking bored out of my mind because you're right. It's a back forth, footsie kind of game. Oh, I'm going to try and fake this guy to pull a move so I can fucking counter and, you know, do this, that, and the other. Like, so boring. It's like watching a match. Like, the most boring match ever in any fighting game I've ever seen in my entire fucking life are two Chun-Li players playing against each other. That is boring as shit. So damn boring. So, yeah, watching charge characters go up against each other in a professional match is not fun. It just isn't. So, I like the fact that it's precisely what you just what what, what you said the producer said is that it's about getting Dragon Ball fans to get into a fighting game. So, I'm stoked. I will say, however, that I really hope that Farmer with a Shotgun is announced because that's all I want to play as. I can imagine him as a pretty cool assist. Like oh my god, that would be so much fun. Like, like you're sitting there and you're like deadlocked in something and then just like the farmer pops out of the corner. Boom! You know, that'd be pretty funny. It'd but be uh, awesome. But yeah, they, there was also some talk today about uh, characters and like their strength and speed and all that stuff. For example, like uh, Krillin, he's not exactly the strongest fighter, but he's going to have some pretty rad assist that's better than the assists you would see from stronger characters. So a good reason to have him on the team is to pop out and give you some sort of assist. I thought that was a really neat way of balancing things out rather than just being all like, oh, well, Krillin and Goku are the same strength. 
Right. Goku's good at everything. Therefore, so is everyone else. <laughs> all the same buttons for the same people do all the same moves. But this one has blue hair. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, like most Dragon Ball fighters since Budokai ended. Moving on to another thing. We're going to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay. So who here is a fan of Kingdom Hearts? Nope. <laughs> eh. I mean, I was. I'm a casual fan. That. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I'm probably a little less than that. Like Maybe maybe you guys should take this one then. We watched a, a video about well, some stuff that got reviewed for Kingdom Hearts, review, revealed for Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> reviewed. Yeah. Uh, well, um, it's apparently going to be a uh, really awesome thing because finally Tor Story. Tor Story. Tor Story. Because finally Toy Story is going to be a world that the characters will be in and defending from the Heartless and... What's the other, other mm, nobodies? Oh, uh, the organization. 13. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Organization thirteen, the heartless and nobodies. That's the other kind of enemy, right? I think, it, I think it's nobodies. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, people have been wanting this. People have been wanting, you know, Pixar films to be part of this game series, and uh, watching the trailer, it made me want to actually like play it again. Which, you know, all of the things I've ever seen for Kingdom Hearts 3, Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm just like, that's cool. That's neat. Have fun with that, guys. And I never cared, but this whole, like, hanging around with Buzz and Woody and, like, holy shit. How could you not yeah, want to exactly. do that? I mean, it was pretty cool watching some of that video, though, like how they were, like, fighting in, like, Andy's room and then outside in the driveway. Yes, yeah. up on the roof and then down in the... the Lawn and, and then there were like a galaxy toys and like uh, the main character kept hopping into like r- like mech toys and yeah, like that's firing. Yeah, cool, I guess. That's really awesome. <laughs> I, it, was, it was all like pretty cool looking stuff and like the the characters themselves like they they looked like toys once entering you know the Toy Story world and yeah. everything and they were the size which of is toys. great. That's that's super cool. I like, like the fact that they went that route. Like you're playing as action figures. That that's pretty neat. I, I thought it was really interesting. We were watching the video and like it was in Japanese, but. It was kind of weird. It, it was kind of weird, but like the voices were pretty similar. For they the were part. very similar. I was really impressed by that because I mean I've never gone out of my way to find translated, you know, dubbed versions of our movies, you know, like Toy Story, Monsters Inc., or anything like that. So it was interesting, like how close the voices were. I was like, I was super impressed. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, I've seen Japanese footage of Batman the animated series. Yeah. And like the voices were pretty similar there too sometimes. Oh, and like okay. that was that that was really interesting to kind of hear that and see how they just kind of translated the show as opposed to like shows coming from Japan around the same era over here where it's all like, Oh, well, we need to change everything about it. That way the American kids will watch it. You know. Like they do like the opposite. Samurai Pizza Cats. <laughs> right on. <laughs> hey do you call when you want some pepperoni? So, yeah, um, and also at the end of the trailer, it's all like, you know, hey, we're going to play that song that everybody knows, You Got a Friend in Me. P.S. Coming in 2018. So, we have a date again. We'll see how that works out. Coming next year. Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. We'll see. Coming to PS5. Or 6. Maybe 7. Probably. Probably the seven. Probably. This is the ultimate waste of time. Anywho. And moving on to our last topic of the evening. Now, I remember asking you guys before we started recording if any of you played RuneScape. And you were all like, no, you're a dummy. It's the ultimate waste of time. But (laughs) I felt like talking about this anyway. So RuneScape is a free-to-play MMO that I played for a while back in like... 2001 or something like old ass runescape and i made my name while watching an episode of space ghost coast to coast like space ghost kept saying something about things being more fantastical more fantastical was too long of a name so i was just fantastical and i played that game for a while and i picked it back up when a couple of our friends Uh flip and d when they were playing that was before i met you right but they were playing it kind of seriously 
And so I picked it back up. Like they would go to the computer lab and play next to each other. Yeah. And like, so I started sitting in there also and I pulled up my old character and I found them and I'd follow them around and annoy the crap out of them. Oh yeah. Was it selling pies? Yeah. Pie, pie or, or die. die. Buy yeah. pies. Yeah. Because D was selling pies and like. I do remember like, sitting in the computer lab with you once whenever you were playing it, but it was just once. Right. And it was like. That was when we were still just, you know, not a couple, but really a couple, but we just refused to admit it. Right. And, uh, but yeah, RuneScape, uh, it's interesting because the way it's controlled is it's like point and click. Like mm-hmm. you, you, you click the part of the, uh, of the screen and it brings up your inventory or it moves you to that part of the screen or you go and you attack that enemy and that sort of thing. Uh, that's how RuneScape has always played. Old RuneScape, new RuneScape, they all play that way. And so now they've finally gotten around to making RuneScape a mobile game and a tablet game. And what's pretty cool about it is that it's not just like, here's RuneScape for mobile and here's RuneScape for PC, but that you, your same account and your same everything that you're doing on PC, you can pick it right back up on mobile. It's got crossplay. So. Which is cool as fuck because whenever we were using crossplay for, what was it? Um, what was that game? Fuck, we were playing it like so. We'd play it on the PS4. You were you were playing you were playing um, Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy, yeah. Because whenever you wanted the TV or wanted to play something, I would just pick up the Vita and just continue where I left off. Right, and it was fucking awesome. Yeah. So there was that, and it, it's it's pretty much the same thing here. It's just you know you can go from your PC to your phone to your tablet to I don't know your smart toilet, uh, just whatever you want to do. You win. The bidet gives you a nice wash. Exactly. <laughs> and RuneScape, I mean, a lot of people make fun of RuneScape, you know, for it being so simple and cheesy and, you know, free to play and all that stuff. But holy crap, RuneScape is actually super popular on Twitch. Like every time I go to just browse to see what people are playing, like RuneScape's always near the oh, top. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. So like just tons of people play RuneScape and tons of people watch people playing RuneScape. Uh, so now if you want to run around and try and buy a girlfriend on the go, you can do so with RuneScape Mobile, and that's coming soon. And, uh, holy crap, that's it. That's everything that we have for today. Yay, that's great, because it's hot as hell in here. Which is why I tried to make this podcast shorter. Which is why I'm on the ground. You're always on the ground. That's where I belong. (laughs) (laughs) So... Anywho, um, before we get out of here, I know Ryan normally has some things to say at the end of these episodes. Ryan, what's going on? Yeah, so you can check out our other shows on Battle Geek Plus on YouTube, um, youtube.com slash Battle Geek Plus. You can check out Awesome Video Game Memories, where we review video games and also do retrospectives on them. And also, we actually decided to bring back what we used to call the main Battle Geek Plus Let's Play show. Now it's rebranded as Battle Geek Plus We Play Games. I recently played an independent game I got from the developer called Drifting Lands. And I posted like the first half an hour of it and my initial thoughts. And it's a pretty cool game with an awesome rock and soundtrack. So hopefully that will kind of take place of Battle Geek Plus Arcade Edition when we are done with all the Arcade Edition episodes. And also, we're, we're going to be playing a lot more games on We Play Games. And also, because I was sick last week, I didn't get to play Marvel Super Heroes on Twitch. But now, since I'm a lot better now, yes, definitely expect me to stream on Twitch, hopefully weekly. Woo! All right, fantastic. Other than that, I'm pretty sure we're good to go. So, my name's Josh. I will see you later. Heather? Bye, I'm melting. Ryan, later. Frank, I've stepped in Heather.